as I was considering um, how we were going to end this series of Psalms 23, I spent a little time thinking about it because there was no way that I was going to be able to finish it, right? Like there was no way, especially how we've been worshiping, how we've been getting it in, there was no way that I was going to be able to finish this particular text. So I'm just thinking about well, what, what are the key things that I wanted to talk about. This morning I talked about going through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I didn't intend to talk about that at all. <laughs> I intended to talk about him restoring my soul. I don't know how we got to valley of the shadow of death and Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> That's not what it said in your Bible? That's what it said in your I got the DRB, the Dante R. Banks version of the Bible. It's not available in, on Amazon. Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro, uh, and a, I'm sorry, some people are offended. A bendigo, a bendigo, but he was dark skinned though. <laughs> He's a dark skinned disciple, amen. <laughs> and we started to talk about how um, God has the power to rescue me from the fire. But he, not, he might not always bring me out of the fire. Sometimes he will walk with me through the fire. I know some of y'all don't have the spirit of uh, Shaka Khan on your life, but <laughs> Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. No, no, y'all don't. Shaka Khan. Some of y'all old, y'all old, y'all so old. That's from 40 years ago. I'm like, I feel for you. Okay. <laughs> we talked about the valley of the shadow of death and how, uh, how we should fear no evil because God is with us even in the fire. Are y'all with me today? And so I, I wanted to, it, that's almost like the end of the six verses, 118 words. That's the end of it. And so I realized as the services were switching that out, I'm, I skipped a part. So I wanted to come back to that part because I, I can't just talk about the Lord being my shepherd and the Lord uh, taking care of me and providing for me and, and not deal with this idea of my cup running over. Now, uh, this is something, again, that David is writing during the time. You have to understand this, that he's writing, he's speaking those things that are not as though they are. Because while he's writing this, he's not resting on a pillow. He's sleeping on a rock. He's, he's, he's sleeping in, in, in a, a cave. He's sleeping in a cave, and, and he's spending his nights and days in the cave, but he's still writing about how good the Lord is. In fact, he's writing about how powerful, how strong the Lord is. I wonder, can you acknowledge how good the Lord is when it doesn't seem like he's being good to you? I know everybody can talk about how good the Lord is when they call, when they car note is paid. I think I have a problem with those people because your car note is paid, your house note is paid, your children are healthy, everything's going okay, and you come to church and fold your arms and, 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 and act like you're doing everybody in the church a favor by being there. And God's been so good to you, so faithful to you. And then there's somebody sitting next to you. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know how they're going to get from here to there. They, don't, they stuck in a dead-end job. Their kids is acting up. They don't know if they got ADHD or AHD or what. They, they need some kind of medicine or whatever. And you're trying to figure out what to do with your life and how to put these two things together. And your checking account say $8.35. And you come into the house of the Lord and say, Hallelujah, the Lord is good. The Lord Lord is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I won't be, I won't, I won't be, I won't dare put God in a situation where he's looking at St. Peter saying, hey, uh, have you seen uh, Pastor Dante? Yeah, yeah, I see him sitting there while the worship's going on, checking his Facebook status. I'm going to deal with it. Hey, can you look in his bank account? Okay, yeah, I'm looking. Is there money there? Yes, Lord, there's money there. Okay, can you check on the kids? 
Are they healthy? Yes, Lord. The kids are healthy. Uh, uh, can you check on this house? No. Is everything paid and up to date? Yes, Lord. Everything is paid and he's a month ahead. I wonder why he's sitting there not giving God the glory. I wonder why he's sitting there not giving God. Am I not worthy of a praise? Am I not worthy of the glory? Am I not worthy of, of my goodness? Am I not worthy? Some of y'all think that, that that conversation is irrational or irrelevant, but that means you haven't read the book of Job. Because in the book of Job, because in the book of Job, the, the Bible says when the angels were going back and forth, when they were going from, from earth to heaven and back and forth, somehow that sneaky lying devil snuck into. And the Bible says that he went into the presence of God. And God looked at him and say, have you considered my servant Job? Wait, 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 man. God started it. <laughs> you got to know the text. God will start a fight about you. You got to hear me right. God will start a fight. He started it. He started it. When, when, when I was a kid, we were, they, they would break up the fight and they'll say, who started it? <laughs> Both of us would be like, Him. But in this particular text, he gives it away himself. He said, I started it. I started it and I'll end it. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. I stand at the front and I look at it all the way to the end. And the truth is, oh, y'all didn't get that. God's about to start a fight on your behalf. You too, you so scared of the fight, you don't realize that the sovereignty of God, the sovereignty of God and the faith, not that you have in him, but the faith that he has in you. That he will look at the devil and say, have you considered? Excuse me. <laughs> have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? Now, the truth is God never asks a question that he doesn't already have the answer to. So if he saw that old sneaky line, bald-headed, <laughs> ugly, I want to say some other words, but I will not Y'all will need a church. I want to say, if he saw that old sneaky lion, stupid, ugly, devil, he already knew that he was considering Job. He already knew who he had been considering. He already knew. You're talking about a God who knows all things, sees all things, prepared for everything. If he asks you a question, he's not asking you a, a question because he don't know the answer. He's asking you a question because you don't know the answer. The Bible says, Lord Jesus, I'm helping y'all already. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that God started a fight on your behalf. He said, have you considered my servant Job? And you know what the devil said? He said, yeah. He said, you know. You know I was checking him out. He said, but I can't touch him. Because you have a hedge. Can we just stop for a second and acknowledge the hedge? Can we just take a second? That's what I want you to, you don't got to praise God for nothing. You don't got to praise him for the money in your account. You don't got to praise him for the car that you drive or the shoes that you wear. But can you just praise him for the hedge? The hedge that kept the enemy out. The hedge that kept your children safe. The hedge that made sure your house didn't get robbed. Nobody broke into it. The hedge that made sure that every bone in their body was protected. I thank God for the hedge. That I can't touch them because there's a hedge. I can't deal with them because there's a hedge. I can't do nothing about them because there's a hedge. God said, you show sure right. You show sure right. He said, if you remove the hedge, he'll cuss you out. He said, you can't touch him because of the hedge. The devil said, if you remove the hedge, he'll cuss you. God said, I'm not going to remove it, but I'll back it up a little bit. The devil backed it up. Job didn't cuss him. He ba he, uh, God backed it up a little bit more. Job didn't cuss him. He backed it up a little bit more. Job didn't cuss him. 
I thank God that the devil can only come so far in my life. Can we just, man, y'all don't know when to preach. You can't touch my children, you lying devil. My God said, you can't have my family, you lying devil. My God said, you can't touch my finances, you lying devil. You can come so far, but then you got to stop. That's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God you serve. But the enemy has to stop. He can only go so, he can only go so far. God playing red light, green light with the devil. Simon says, you can only go so far. You should be pray If you don't praise God for no other reason, you need to praise him because he can only go so. The devil can only go so far in your life. The devil can only go so far. And I thank God for the hedge. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means I'm going to eat in front of them. That means I'm going to eat in front of them. And God said, it's okay. You know what God acknowledges in, these, in this statement? That you, that, that, that you can get two things that God can acknowledge. The first thing is that you're going to have enemies. Yeah. You're going to have enemies. That's okay. It's a part of your life. Don't be surprised. The Bible said, don't be, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. He said, in fact, he said, they hated me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I was able to love them, and they hated me. I wonder, can you love some people? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Some of y'all have put to, been put to that kind of test. It's not a finance test. It's a love test. It's not a, a praise me test. It's a love test. Because some of us, woo, church people, church people are terrible for this. Because we can go in church and pass the praise test, but go in the parking lot and fail the love test. We can go in church and pass the praise test, but we go right out to the restroom and we fail the love test. What you mean? It ain't no tissue in here. See, that's what I be talking about. Who? works here I go I go I go out to the parking lot and I fail the parking lot test because somebody's standing in front of your car talking yeah, man. some of y'all them boy that's how you know if you need that's why we don't have Christian bumper stickers. That's why we don't have God chasing bumper stickers. Because I've seen some of y'all driving before. Y'all be out there just, just, woo. I know some of y'all. I should call out your name because I know. I know you. You out there just, somebody cut you off. You get in the other lane fast as you can. Go back to cut them off and then look at them. property of God chases community, community church. My treasure's in heaven. I mean, my, my, tre my treasure's in heaven. And, 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 and I believe that this is the season now where God said, hey, can you pass the test of eating in front of your enemies? Not gloating. Not getting upset, not getting mad. Can you pass the test when God blesses you and they upset? Listen, I'm not. Y'all right, know me. I walk into the room. I give them the big hug. Yeah. They don't like me. I'm going to be the most me they ever seen. Yeah. Yo, my man, how is you? <laughs> my God. prepares a table before me in the presence of my excuse me sir. that's good water God has already set you up in places you have no idea about he set things in order that you have no idea about. I, get, I gave you this a little bit earlier, but here it is. That, that, can you believe that there's a table being prepared for you? There, there is a, your name is in rooms that you, didn't even know, you don't even know exist. 
They having conversations about you right now. Have, can somebody receive that in faith that my name is being spoken of in rooms that I, they, that they, they are setting a place. They are setting a place. I told y'all about a dinner that I went to that I, I don't, in my heart, I shouldn't have been invited to. My wife would tell you, no, yeah, you should have. You're supposed to be here. <laughs> my wife is good at that. She'll, she, wherever she sits, she's supposed to be. I'm from the hood to hood. Sometimes I'll be sitting at places wondering, somebody going to be like, sir, mm -mm. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, sir. No. Can I see your ticket? In my mind, I still deal with this. I still deal with this. And the problem with most of us, that's, why, that's another reason why we can't praise, because we're seated in heavenly places, and we don't even recognize the heavenly places that we are seated in, and we can't give God a praise because we keep thinking something bad going to happen. Every time in your life that something good happens, you see, well, it's got to be something bad happening. Something bad's on the way because something's been going so good. No, nothing bad is going to happen. The goodness of the Lord is following you. The goodness of the Lord is walking with you. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever can you say that while you're sleeping on a rock can you preach that while you're sleeping on a rock surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. There are blessings that belong to you. There is a cup that overflows. Woo! There is a cup that overflows. There is a cup that overflows. There is a cup that oh, can we just stop and thank God for the cup that overflows? That every time it never gets empty. Every time. That every time I take a sip. That every time I drink any of it, the Bible says that he keep, there is an everlasting well that never runs dry. That my cup, that my cup runneth over. You got to pay attention to the fact. You got to pay attention to what's happening now. You see, every time I take a sip. Every time I take a drink. These gentlemen are at the ready. To refill my cup. Now I need you to get this in your mind. I need you to get this in your mind because uh, you have a God. Who is your armor bearer. The Bible says he is my right hand. Lord have mercy. I'm supposed to be his right hand. But the Bible says he is my right hand. And every time I empty my cup. Excuse me one second. He stands at the ready. He stands there waiting. Can you celebrate a God who is ready and waiting to fill your cup every time? So there was a young lady. The Bible says, ooh, that clock, that clock Ryan. Clocks be lying. Where y'all get these clocks from? It's got the wrong time on it. The Bible said there's a young woman who was going to a well in the book of John. She was going to the well at the wrong time. But she was doing it because she was thirsty. Your thirst for the wrong thing will send you to the well at the wrong time. The Bible says she was coming to the well when it was hot. She was missing it. Y'all can't, I'm drinking it too fast for y'all to see how cold it is. But it gave me the brain chills just a second ago. It's cold. But it's good. Excuse me. I don't know when to shout. Because I thank God that I serve a God who makes sure that my cup yeah. Yeah. overflows. Yeah. The Bible says, let me 
carried us around for a time. The Bible says a young lady came to a well looking for something to drink. She came to a well and found a well. The Bible said there was a man sitting at the well. His name was Jesus. And I love this because the Bible says that he planned to meet her at a well when he had never met her before. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible that God already got a plan for your life? That God already thought about it? That he thought about it before you thought about it? That he set it up? That he's already ready? The Bible says he told his disciples, I must need. You don't hear me. I must need to go to Samaria. I must see. I must need God. But he said he must need me. I must need to go to Samaria. And in Samaria, the Bible said there is a well. It was called Jacob's well. And a young lady came to the well to get drink, but she would come at the heat of the day. This is when you know she had a problem with people. Because all the regular people, they wouldn't come to the well in the heat of the day. They would come just before daybreak when the water was cold and refreshing. But she was willing to drink hot water so she didn't have to deal with hard people. They didn't get along with her. They didn't like her. She didn't like them. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The Bible says on this one day. It's one situation. Jesus said, I must need, I got to beat her there. I believe God has already beat you to your next victory. He's like, Can you celebrate that for a second? That God is already in the right place to bless you. He's, our, he's waiting for you there. He's in the right place, the place where you're supposed to be when the blessing comes. The Bible says that when she got there, he was already there. She went to dig into the well. And he said, can you give me something to drink? The well was asking her. The well was that, what do you do when the well asks you for a drink? What do you do when the well looks at you and says, give me something drink she said she said I, I love this because I think I think she was on his intellectual level yeah I know y'all not used to that I'm, but I think she was on his intellectual level because of her response she didn't respond like a like a old uh, like a dumb person she responded like a person who had plenty sense she said sir you don't have nothing to draw with and the well is deep Whoa. She said, you have no idea. I've been through it. I've been over it. She said, whatever line you got, whatever game you running, I, well, man, see, you got a few. That's some women. That's some daughters I got. Whatever game you running, it don't matter. I, did, I heard it all. I seen it all. I've been there. I've been around the world, and I, 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 I ain't got time for this. She said, whatever you're trying to sell, I ain't buying it. Because you don't got nothing to draw with, and the well is That's why I can't, I can't argue with everybody. The well is deep. I can't have a conversation with everybody. The well is deep. What God is trying to do in me is too deep and too important for me to be hanging around in shallow places. She was wise. She said, you don't got nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Can we just stop right there? This is why I don't have time to preach this. Because if you knew, y'all wouldn't even let me finish. If you knew, if you knew who it was to, that said to you, give me something to drink, you would have said to me, Lord, Lord, you give me something. You would have said to me, Lord, you give me something to drink. If you realize that it's the well talking to the well. 
God is Jesus saying, if you knew, if you knew, if you knew, if you knew. See, you don't know you because you don't know me. You don't know who you are because you don't know who your God is. He said, if you knew who it was, you would ask me for drink. I want to stop right there for a second because when he said, give me something to drink, I wonder what he was really asking for. You have to know this, and I don't have time to go all into it, but you have to know the conversation turned from water to worship. Excuse me one second. Every preacher doesn't have the capacity to preach a message like this. The message switch, switches. The, the conversation switches from water to worship. He says, if you knew who it was, if you knew who it was who was asking you, you would ask me. Wait a minute. If you knew who it was that was asking you, where, where, where are we going? What was he trying to say? If you knew who it was who was asking you, then you would ask me. And this is, this is the reciprocal the reciprocal response of worship is this. He fills me so I can pour out. Yes, sir. So he can fill me again. Yes, so I can pour out again. Yes, so he can. This is what we've been doing this whole time. As I, as I empty the glass, they fill the glass. As I empty the cup, they fill the cup. And what Jesus was saying to, to this young lady is, if you pour it out, Lord have mercy, I'll fill it back up. If you pour it out, I'll fill it back up. If you knew who it was, if you knew who it was who was asking you for the drink, you would pour it out. And it turns from water to worship. She said, she, she said, he said, I, I'm the Messiah. She said, I, I, thought, I thought we weren't supposed to worship in this place. He said, wherever I am, that's where worship is. Wait a minute, are we talking about water? Are we talking about worship? Yes. And my cup runneth over. It is the reciprocal responsibility of worship. That I pour out to God. And he fills me back up. Get this. We sing a song. It says, it is your breath. In my lungs. So I pour out my praise. I pour out my praise. But wait a minute. Who do I pour out my praise to? The one who put the breath in me. So when my cup runneth over. When my cup overflows, it is the same God who gave it to me that I'm supposed to give it back. Oh, y'all not hearing me today. The same God who put the breath in my lungs is requiring the breath back from me. He's requiring a hallelujah. He's requiring a thank you, Jesus. But you know why he deserves it? Because he put it in there in the first place. Can somebody celebrate Jesus if you know he put it in there in the first place? God, I give you my praise. I give you the worship because you put it in there in the first place. They, nobody put it in there. The, the devil didn't put it in there. God put it in there. And now he's asking for it back. And it looks like water. But how do I pay it back with worship? Because every time I take a sip, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that my cup runneth over. That I have everything I need. He anoints my head so that I can recognize my cup. Are y'all with me? That's why it says, see, if your head's not anointed, you won't recognize that your cup is full. You'll always be complaining about your cup and about whether or not it's not full to the brim. This is why some of y'all mad right now because you say, well, the cup's not running over. But it, the cup doesn't have to run over because the source is never ending. much as I drink, he fills. And my cup overflows. 
But here's my question. If your cup's running over, is your worship matching the level of the flow in your cup? Will my praise come to the level of my cup? Y'all, oh man, I don't hear me. Will my praise match the level of my cup? I, I, right now, I just need a demonstration. I, I just need two or three people to help me in this demonstration. Do you have a praise that is equivocable to the level that God has filled your cup? Do you have a praise that lines up with the level that God has filled your cup because some of y'all got cups that's overflowing but you come to church with a half empty praise and a half empty worship but I wonder I wonder I wonder is there anybody in here that says God fill me God because every drop you feel I'm gonna pour it back out every drop you feel every time you bless my family every time you bless my loved ones every time you bless my children every time you watched over me every time you protected me every time you covered me every time you put me in places I didn't deserve to be and I'm not gonna give you a 30 second half-baked praise I'm gonna give you my whole praise because my cup because my cup because my cup because my cup runneth if my cup's running over then my praise should be running over if my cup's running over then glory should be pouring it should be pouring out of my life graciousness gratitude blessing not just that has been bestowed upon me but it's coming out of me I'm going to spend all 2023 giving you a glory giving you a praise why because my cup my cup runneth over my cup runneth over I want you to notice come here Chauncey come here come here I want you to notice that every time he comes back to me with the don't mess with my analogy, man. Every time he comes back to me, his glass is full. Because he's a never ending well. That's what the Bible says. He's a never ending well. It's a well that never going to dry. If you knew who it was that asked you for drink. He said, you would have said to me, give me something to drink. I'm not going to be caught not giving God back what he gave me. He gave it to me in health for my children. I'm going to give it back to him in worship. He gave it to me in salvation for my life and my soul. I'm going to give it back to him in praise. He gave it to me in just keeping my mind, keeping my mind, keeping my mind. I don't come here to play. I come here to pour. I didn't come here to play. I came here to pour. God, I'm asking you to fill me up so that I can pour out. And the Bible says, my cup runneth over. I thank God that his his well never runs dry. Come on, keep pouring. Yeah, it's okay. We'll clean all this up. You serve a God. You serve a God. You serve a God. You serve a God. God. That as much as you drink, you can't drink enough that he won't bless you. You can't drink enough that he won't cover you. You can't drink enough that your cup won't run over. You can't drink enough. Can we celebrate God if our cup is running over today? Thank you, Jesus. My cup is running over. Now, this is the season now. But God is about to increase your capacity. God said, no, no, no. I got more I want to do for you. But you got to open up, open up, open up, open up. That's what worship does for me. 
it opens up my mind, it opens up my heart, it, compre it, com it increases my capacity to receive God. The prayer of Jabez is not for more stuff, it's for more capacity. The prayer of Jabez, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, enlarge my tents, enlarge my tents, not for more stuff, but for more capacity for you. I'm praying for more capacity. Some of y'all have, you, you, last year was one of the hardest years of your life. Not everybody. Some of y'all last year was difficult. But God said, no, no, no. Come back to the well. Come back to the well. I'm going to fill you up. Come back to the well. I haven't forgotten about you. Come back to the well. And you keep trying to, you keep running on empty. But you got to come back to the well. Is anybody going to return to the well? Yeah. Yeah. My cup. Run it over, God. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Can you receive that today? God can take your not enough and turn it into more than enough. God, God, God is not a God of lack. He'll give you everything you need. And all you have to do is return it to him in, in what? In worship. Can we just take a few seconds and worship the God who fills our cup? Come on, with your own words, with your own song. Let's return it back to him, God. We return it to you and worship God.
in my cup. My cup runneth. My cup runneth over. says thank you God we're just a bunch of great grateful people God. just saying thank you God you deserve the glory God. you deserve the praise God everything's not all right but everything's all right Everything's not all right, but everything's all right. But God, I worship you for the rest of my year. You have set a table before me. I believe that, God. You're working it out in the background. You're working it. Even the things that I was worried about, you were already working it out things that I'm concerned about, God, you're already worked it out. 